good good afternoon to uh, good afternoon to all of you today is the third day of the icpr sponsor special lecture series on values and well being classical and contemporary indian philosophical perspectives today's speaker is professor nirmal narayan chakraborty sir is affiliated to rabindra bharti university department of philosophy sir has authored and co-authored several national and international publications and also working as a reviewer for reputed professional journals sir is having an active association with uh, with different societies and academics around the world he has received several awards sir has delivered several lectures as visiting fellow in several indian universities apart from academic activities sir held the position of member secretary of icpr and served as member of brs pgbs of different universities sir is also associated with our department he has delivered several lectures in different lecture series and presently he is he is a member of brs of our department today we are very happy and honored that sir is present among us he also gave us time out of his busy schedule so many thanks and welcome you sir now i request sir to deliver his lecture the topic is a topic of his deliberation is ethical values and well being from the view point of ethics of shrimad bhagavad gita thank you good evening everybody uh it's indeed a matter of great pleasure that you know in this icpr uh, sponsored series of lectures uh kadi natural university has um, you know invited me to share uh, some, of my, some of my ideas with you all as uh, already mentioned by uh, uh my young colleague um today we shall be uh, discussing uh some issues that have been uh, dealt with in bhagavad gita the lecture specifically uh, you know um, is entitled uh, ethical values and the idea of well being from the perspective of bhagavad gita ami shokoler shubidhar jonno ektu bangla ektu ingreji mishiye bolbo jate shobar kache amar boktobbo ta pouchhoy bhalo kore भगवद गीतार जे विशेष स्थान भारत दर्शन धर्म तथा संस्कृति आलारपेक्षा रखे ना भगवद गीता ग्रंथटी को विशेष प्रस्थान ग्रंथ नये अर्थात अपना जेमन भारत दर्शन अनेक प्रस्थान कथा भावी न्याय शख्य वेदांत बौद्ध जैन इत्यादि इत्यादि और अनेक परवर्तकाले गड़े उठे सरकम को प्रस्थान ग्रंथ ये अर्थात को प्रस्थान जे निजस्व जे मत निजस्व जो सिद्धान से सिद्धान समर्थन करार जो दाय प्रस्थान अंतर्गत ग्रंथगल थे टीका भाष्य थे भगवद गीतार से दाय नहीं कारण नाना 
मानुष नाना चिंतार दिखे नाना साधनार धारा दिखे भगवद गीतार मध्य ध्यान धारणा उपलब्धि आदर्श समर्थन ता पे कारण नाना दार्शनिक प्रस्थान चिंताविदरा ते निजे मध्य प्रचुर पार्थक्य आ ता निजे मध्य नाना विषय नहीं अनेक मत बनीमय करतर्क कर सकले भगवद गीतार द्वारा अनुप्राणित उद्बुद्ध हो सकते ही भगवद गीताय जे आदर्श कथा बला जीत चिंता भावनार कथा बला द्वारा अनुप्राणित हो कारण जे कारण सामग्रिक भाव भारतीय दर्शन धर्म संस्कृति भगवद गीतार एत खानी प्रभाव पड़े एवं कारण तो जेहेतु भगवद गीता को निर्दिष्ट दार्शनिक प्रस्थान सिद्धान के समर्थन करार्जन को निर्दिष्ट सिद्धान के विपक्ष हिसाब से पूर्वपक्ष हिसाब से खंडन करार्जन रचित है से कारण ये एक समन्वयी दृष्टि लक्ष्य करते भगवद गीतार जो अठारोटी अध्याय आई आठ अध्याय मूल बक्तव्यगल दिखे तक दृष्टि दी तब एखे प्रथम दिखे प्रथम बेस कैकटी अध्याय कर्म कथा बला कर्म सम्पादन कथा बला कर्म बोलते कि बोझा कि भाव कर्म सम्पादन करा उचित इत्यादि इत्यादि नहीं अनेक कथा बला कैकटी अध्याय भक्त कथा बला तरह आर कैकटी अध्याय ज्ञान कथा विशेषकर कृष्ण स्वरूप कृष्ण से एक तत्व हिसेब देखा तरह स्वरूप से ही परम तत्व के लाभ करार उपाय इत्यादि इत्यादि नहीं आलोचना कर एकदम शेषे तीन चार अध्याय तीन टी गुण कथा बला श्रद्धा तपस्या इत्यादि कथा बला त्यागर कथा बला इत्यादि तेल ये सूची पत्र बोझा जाए भगवद गीतार जो आदर्श जो चिंता समन्वयी चिंता सब किचुके एक जगह नहीं धर्म तथा संस्कृत जो मूल चिंताधारा गुली चिंतार मूल जो वैशिष्ट्यगुली एक जगह नहीं समन्वयी रूपे रूप तैरि कर एक चेष्टा भगवद गीतार मध्य देखते पाई कारण ही अनेक समय बला भगवद गीता एक सिंक्रेटिक रिलीजियन कथा बोले सिंक्रेटिक एथिक्सर कथा बोले अर्थात एक समन्वयी नैतिकता समन्वयी धर्म कथा बोले भगवद गीता साधारण मन करी महाभारत अंश विश्व पर्व अंश इन कि वितर्क आव क्यों बोलें भगवद गीता प्रक्षिप्त होते अर्थात परवर्तकाले रचित हुए महाभारत संगे से जुड़े देवा प्रसंगे श्रद्धे अनंतलाल ठाकुर बस किस गवेषणा निबंध आनी अवश्य देखान चेष्टा कर भगवद गीता के प्रक्षिप्त धरियोबा तत्सत्व तो भगवद गीतार बहु बहु श्लोक एवं से श्लोक अर्थ पावा जाए यह बहु श्लोक महाभारत मध्य आर्था गीता के बाद दिए जो महाभारत कथा जी भावी तेल से गीतार प्रचुर श्लोक एके बारे प्राय प्राय अपरिवर्तित भावे पावा जाए अनेक जगह गीतार 
শ্লোকের যে মূল বক্তব্য বা সিদ্ধান্ত সেগুলি মহাভারতের মধ্যে পাওয়া যায় যাই হোক মহাভারতের প্রক্ষিপ্ত কিনা গীতা সে আলোচনায় আপাতত আমরা যাচ্ছি না গীতার যে মাহাত্ম বা বৈশিষ্ট্য সেই বৈশিষ্ট্যের কথা বলতে গিয়ে অনেকে একটা শ্লোক বলেন সেখানে বলা হয় যে সর্বোপনিষদ গাব দোগ্ধা গোপাল নন্দনা পার্থ বৎস সুধীর ভোক্তা দুগ্ধং গীতা মৃতং মহা আপাত দৃষ্টিতে গীতা মহাভারত নবক মহাকাব্যের অংশ হলেও এই গীতা বলছে সর্ব উপনিষদের সার এখানে বলা হয়েছে যে সর্ব সকল উপনিষদকে যদি আমরা গাভীর সাথে তুলনা করি সেই গাভীর যিনি দুগ্ধা যিনি দুধ দহন দহন করছেন এমন তিনি হচ্ছেন এই নন্দন যিনি গোপাল নিজেও আর দুধ পাওয়ার জন্য প্রথমে বাছুর একটু মায়ের দুধ খায় সেই বৎস বা বাছুর হচ্ছেন পার্থ মানে অর্জুন আর এই দুধ পান করছে কে সুধি যাদের ধি বা বুদ্ধি পরিষ্কৃত হয়েছে সংস্কৃত হয়েছে সেই ধি ব্যক্তিরা এই এই দুধ পান করছেন এবং এই দুধ হচ্ছে সর্বোপনিষদ সমস্ত উপনিষদের যেন সার আমরা এই গীতার মধ্যে পাচ্ছি কাজেই যদি উপনিষদকেই যদি ভারতীয় দর্শন বা ভারতীয় চিন্তার অন্যতম মূল গ্রন্থ বলে স্বীকার করা হয় তবে নিঃসন্দেহে ভগবত গীতা সেই উপনিষ ঔপনিষদিক যে ধারা সেই ঔপনিষদিক ধারারই একটি অন্যতম শ্রেষ্ঠ প্রকাশ চিন্তার প্রকাশ ধ্যান ধারণার প্রকাশ এটা আমরা স্বীকার করতেই পারি কেউ কেউ এরকম একটা প্রশ্ন তোলেন যে গীতা কখন রচিত হয়েছে মহাভারতের মধ্যে আমরা জানি মহাভারতের ঘটনা যে কুরুক্ষেত্রের রণাঙ্গনে যখন অর্জুনের মধ্যে যুদ্ধ করবে কি করবে না এই নিয়ে প্রশ্ন এই নিয়ে সংশয় উঠেছিল তারই উত্তরে গীতা সেখানে শ্রীকৃষ্ণ বলেছিলেন এখন কেউ কেউ এরকম প্রশ্ন করেন যে এটা কি সম্ভব একটা যুদ্ধ ক্ষেত্র যেখানে দুই যুযুধান পক্ষ অস্ত্র নিয়ে প্রস্তুত যুদ্ধের জন্য হিংসার উন্মাদনা যেখানে ছড়িয়ে পড়েছে রাজ্য কার দখলে যাবে তার উত্তর পাওয়ার জন্য এই রকম একটা পরিস্থিতি যেখানে সেখানে এরকম আঠারোটা অধ্যায় ধরে হ্যাঁ কৃষ্ণ গীতার উপদেশ দিলেন আর অর্জুন শুনলেন এটা এটা কি সম্ভব এটা একটা মানে আমাদের সাধারণ জ্ঞানে এটাকে প্রায় অসম্ভব বলেই মনে হয় সত্যি কিন্তু এটার একটা উত্তর গীতার মধ্য থেকেই দেওয়া যায় আমরা জানি গীতাতে স্থিত ধি বলে একটা শব্দ ব্যবহার করা হয়েছে যার ধি বা বুদ্ধি স্থিত হয়েছে যেমন অর্জুন জিজ্ঞাসা করেছিলেন কৃষ্ণকে যে স্থিত প্রজ্ঞ কা ভাষা সমাধি কেশব স্থিত প্রজ্ঞ কাকে বলে অর্জুনের প্রশ্ন ছিল উত্তরে কৃষ্ণ অনেক কথা বলেছেন তার মধ্যে একটি কথা আমরা এখন স্মরণ করতে পারি দুঃখেশু অনুদ্বিঘ্নমনা সুখেশু বিগত স্পৃহ বীত রাগ ভয় ক্রোধ স্থিত ধীর মুনিরুচ্চতে স্থিত ধী ব্যক্তির লক্ষণ দিচ্ছেন কৃষ্ণ দুঃখেশু অনুদ্বিঘ্নমনা দুঃখে যিনি বিচলিত নন যিনি উদ্বিগ্ন নন সুখেশু বিগত স্পৃহ আর সুখে যিনি বীত রাগ অর্থাৎ সুখে যিনি একেবারে আত্মহারা হয়ে যান না আমাদের সাধারণ মানুষের জীবনে আমরা ঠিক এর উল্টোটাই হই এই যে স্থিত ধীর যে লক্ষণ কৃষ্ণ দিয়েছেন যে দুঃখে অনুদ্বিঘ্নমনা এবং সুখে বিগত স্পৃহ এই স্থিত ধীর লক্ষণ যদি আমরা এই 
ক্ষেত্রে রণাঙ্গনে গীতার উপদেশ দেওয়া প্রসঙ্গে স্মরণ করি তাহলে দেখব যে এখানে কৃষ্ণ এবং অর্জুন দুজনেই স্থিতধি হয়েছেন হয়েছেন বলেই তো আসন্ন যুদ্ধের যে সম্ভাবনা তার মুখে দাঁড়িয়ে অর্জুন এই সমস্ত তাত্ত্বিক প্রশ্ন কৃষ্ণকে করছেন এবং কৃষ্ণ তার যথাযথ উত্তর দিচ্ছেন কাজেই এই এই যে প্রশ্ন এই যে সংশয় আমাদের মনে জেগেছিল যে যুদ্ধ ক্ষেত্রে হম যেখানে অস্ত্রের হ্যাঁ ঝঙ্কার উঠছে আর কিছুক্ষণের মধ্যেই যেখানে যুদ্ধ বাঁধবে এবং সেই যুদ্ধ যেসব যুদ্ধ নয় একই পরিবারের দুই পক্ষের মধ্যে যুদ্ধ হ্যাঁ ভ্রাতৃহত্যা স্বজন হত্যা গুরু হত্যা যেখানে একবারে সামনেই যার সম্ভাব্যতা রয়েছে সেই রকম জায়গায় দাঁড়িয়ে সেই রকম স্থানে সেই রকম পরিবেশে সেই রকম পরিস্থিতিতে দাঁড়িয়ে কিভাবে অর্জুন এই প্রশ্ন করেন আর কৃষ্ণ তার উত্তরে আঠেরোটি অধ্যায় ধরে দেন এই প্রশ্নের উত্তরে বলতে পারি যে তারা স্থিতধি বলেই এটা পারেন যারা এই সংসারে স্থিতধি যাদের বুদ্ধি স্থিত হয়েছে যারা দুঃখে অনুদ্বিগ্ন মনা সুখে বিগত স্পৃহা তারা সংসারের এই যে নানা অঘটন ঘটন যেমন তাতে তারা উদ্বিগ্ন হন না অন্তত যারা স্থিতধি তাদের হওয়ার কথা নয় এই কথা কৃষ্ণ বলেছেন কাজেই কাজেই ওই সেই যুদ্ধক্ষেত্রে দাঁড়িয়ে এই আঠেরোটি অধ্যায়ের যে আলোচনা সেই আলোচনাটা অসম্ভব নয় এই দিক থেকে দেখলে আমাদের আলোচ্য বিষয়ে আমরা চলে আসি আমাদের যে আলোচনার শিরোনাম এথিক্যাল ভ্যালিউজ অ্যান্ড আইডিয়া অফ ওয়েল বিং ফ্রম দ্য পার্সপেকটিভ অফ ভগবদ গীতা সো উই শ্যাল ডিভোট আওয়ার ডিসকোর্স টুডে অন two aspects primarily on two aspects of bhagavad gita one is of course an attempt to construct the idea of ethical value that could be said to be embedded in bhagavad gita the idea of well being of an individual and a society in general that one could extract from the teachings of the bhagavad gita this is one part and of course of course the we shall, uh, we shall also try to find out some justifications for the kind of idea of ethical value and that of well-being that emerges from the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. But any ethical theory requires a metaphysics to defend it. At least in the present context, since we are concerned with ethics of human behavior any any attempt to construct an ethical theory of human behavior presupposes a metaphysical theory of man so to say a metaphysics of man what kind of ideal that a person that an individual is supposed to strive at and and what are the different ways what are the different methods that an individual could follow in order to arrive at that final goal so this metaphysics of man this philosophy of man 
this this theory of 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 man and his place in this world will constitute the second half of my discussion i shall start my discussion with finding out the tatpariya the main thesis or significance of bhagavad gita in indian hermeneutics we have six ways of determining the significance the tatpariya of a text i shall apply at least one of those methods to bhagavad gita in order to find out the tatpariya the significance of bhagavad gita ethics in its minimal sense is expected to guide humans in their conduct it tells us which actions are moral and which are not so and it gives reasons for an action being moral or immoral of course this is a very very uh, uh, you know uh, uh, rough definition rough idea surely one could improve on it but this is the this is the minimal requirement that that we generally expect from ethics ethics as a branch of philosophy is a study of these arguments and their assessments out of this analysis appear some ideals that are justified to be worth following these are considered values that humans ought to follow inculcation of these values generate human beings that are superior in some significant sense than people lacking in these values these values could be of individual nature like having patience possessing self respect etc some others could involve a community of people values like honesty respect for others etc makes sense only in a communitarian setup this whole discourse on ethical values is directed is directed to making a society better place to live it is hoped that in such a society the well being of every person will be ensured now the question is what does well being of a person consist in well being of a person consists in one could argue possessing what is good for him so my well being in this sense consists in possessing what is good for me now this phrase good for him is rather problematic when a patient undergoes an operation or is prescribed to undergo a series of medical tests he suddenly does not welcome it he does not think that these actions are good for him but the physician thinks that these are good for the patient one could think one could think of more nuanced examples of this kind but there is a more serious conceptual problem here good for quote unquote one might argue means not that the person concerned is benefited by the presence of the thing that is good for him it just means that the person thinks that the thing concerned is good on this view the expression good for means the thing is good and so goodness resides in the object and not in the person but when 
Remember, when good for him, this phrase was introduced, it was designed to account for well-being and this too, well-being of people. We were not concerned with well-being of things in the world. Well-being of a person, it must be noted, does not concern a skill that a person might acquire. It is not a matter of, you know, having a skill. A person might be a good engineer, but what he does while being a good engineer might not bring well-being to him. Think of an engineer who produces fake bills to earn more money. This implies that merely having more pleasant experience is not the mark of one's well-being. So having pleasant experience out of something does not, does not uh, 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 explain uh, 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 well-being for, for me. For the same reason, maximum satisfaction of one's desire cannot constitute one's well-being. Can one hope to come up with a list of things that facilitates well-being of the people concerned? At a list well-being This list could be made keeping in, keeping the aim in mind that the members in the list would lead people to the path to perfection. This of course requires a philosophical formulation of the idea of perfect human as the goal to achieve. In other words, a metaphysics of man is needed to back up the idea of well-being. Ethics presupposes a metaphysics. Bhagavad Gita is a nice example of this interplay. A metaphysics of man er kotha amra pore ashbo. Now look at how Bhagavad Gita starts. It starts with a description of Arjuna's reluctance to fight. Through various ways, Krishna tries to convince Arjuna to engage in the battle. Let us try to find out the message, the significance of Tathparya of Gita. And here I shall apply one of the methods prescribed by the Indian hymenoids while trying to decipher the significance of a text. One of the methods prescribed is Upakrama Upasanghara Aikya. If there is a unity in the meaning that one finds in the beginning of the text and that one finds in the end of the text, then that meaning should be regarded as the Tatparya, as the significance as the main thesis of the text. So Upakrama Upasanghara Aikya is one of the ways of determining the Tatparya of the text. Now let us see how Bhagavad Gita starts and how Bhagavad Gita ends. Notice the first shloka of the first chapter where it has been said that all the warriors have gathered in Kurukshetra which has been described as Dharmakshetra. So Kurukshetre, Dharmakshetre, Kurukshetre, Samaveta, Yut Sabaha, Mamaka, Pandava, Shaiva, Kim Akurvata, Sanjaya. This is the first shloka of the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So in this Dharmakshetra, which is called Kurukshetra, Dhritarashtra requests Sanjaya to tell him in details what the warriors are doing. Kim Akurvata, what the warriors are doing. Kurukshetra is the place where deliberations on dharma took place. This is Dharmakshetra. Questions were raised about the nature and implementation of dharma. Dhritarashtra wants to know all about this, all about dharma. But he himself is blind, unaware of the nature of dharma. 
So Dhritarashtra's blindness is not only external blindness, it is, also in, it is also internal blindness. As Tagore beautifully put it, Andho Ami Antare Bahire. So he himself is blind, unaware of the nature of Dharma. He requires assistance, and Sanjaya was there to offer this assistance. But to get to the nature of Dharma, one needs special training, special insight, Divya Chakshu, and this Sanjaya received from Vyasa. So Sanjaya, with his usual ability, was not able to describe what is happening in Dharma Kshetra. He needed a special training. So he got this Divya Chakshu, special insight, which was, you know, uh, given to him by Vyasa, the author of the text. So now, with the help of this Divya Chakshu, with the help of this special uh, vision, Sanjaya could see what is happening in Dharma Kshetra. And then he is describing whatever he is seeing to Dhritarashtra. After a prolonged description that continued for 18 chapters, Sanjaya, notice how Bhagavad Gita ends. Sanjaya acknowledges that it is only due to Vyasa that he got the privilege, the Divya Chakshu, to listen to the discourse between Arjuna and Krishna. So this implies that with ordinary you know, uh, 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 knowledge, one could never gain insight into the discourse of Arjuna and Krishna. One needs a Divya Chakshu, the one that Sanjaya was blessed with. So Sanjaya is not merely a storyteller. He had the special ability to get to know all about the discourse. Thanks to Vyasa, the blurred vision was removed from the eyes of Sanjaya. Dhritarashtra is an inquirer. He is asking, but he is unable to see what is happening. Sanjaya comes to his rescue. Now notice the last sloka of the 18th chapter. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Partho Dhanudhara, Tatra Shreer Vijayo Bhutir, Dhruva Neetir Matir Mama. This is the last sloka of the 18th chapter in Bhagavad Gita. Sanjaya declares, after all the discussion, after all, all the description that Sanjaya gave to Dhritarashtra, Sanjaya declares that where both Arjuna and Krishna are present, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Partho Dhanudhara. Notice the adjectives used uh, before the names Krishna and Arjuna. Yogeshwara Krishna. Krishna is the Lord of Yoga. Krishna is, is the presiding deity of yoga. And Dhanudhara Partha. So Arjuna, you know, is, is, is carrying the, the Dhanu, the weapon. Now where both Arjuna and Krishna are present, their state, the good state, winning, flourishing, and unfailing dharma. Tatra Shreer Vijayo Bhuti Dhruva Neetir Matir Mama. This is the last shloka of Bhagavad Gita. So, where we have both Arjuna and Krishna, we are blessed with what? First, good state, a, a, a state 
which is good in every aspect. So we are talking about social morality. We are talking about collective morality. There we have winning, vijaya, flourishing and unfailing dharma where dharma never fails where the 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 uh, you know the triumph of dharma is ensured all these constitute well-being of an individual and also well-being of the state of which the individual is a citizen if dhritarashtra wanted to know dharma the last shloka offers an answer to this query well being is dharma and this well being extends to both the individual and the community this is a point that i would like to draw your attention to individual inculcation of values facilitates the establishment of a just state dharma rashtra gita provides us with a metaphysics to back its claim of the meeting of the individual and communitarian ethics so this is this is the main message or tatparya of bhagavad gita as i understand it let us focus on the idea of individual well being as presented in gita ethics as mentioned earlier is primarily concerned with action 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 requires an agent and to be able to assess the action morally speaking the agent must be conscious of what she is doing this brings in moral responsibility assuming that the ideal of human is attainment of liberation or moksha performing action is a desideratum for this achievement so there is no other alternative and krishna emphatically you know uh, tells arjuna that there is no alternative to action action must action is the only way but the moot question is what is the nature of action and what is the modality of action it is true that the liberated soul the moksha the person who has attained moksha mukta purusha it is true that liberated soul transcends the realm of realm of action but this state of inaction is different from the state of inaction arising out of non performance simpliciter so i, I shall explain this uh, in in uh, a little more detail there are two kinds of inaction one inaction is simple laziness you know not doing anything the ordinary common sense you know laziness but there is another kind of inaction the inaction that that a mukta purusha attains because when a person attains mukti or moksha he is beyond all the mundane worldly requirements he he transcends all the relations that he has with this world so once a person transcends all these worldly relations he does not need or he is not required to perform any action action does not really make sense in that realm so there are two kinds of inaction simple idleness cannot usher the state of inaction that is conducive 
to liberation. What is required for liberation is a positive action, that is, the inaction that is attained through action. Very interesting. The state of inaction, the state of moksha is attained through action. It is only through performance of action as prescribed by the Vedas that the knowledge of self dawns on the person landing her in the state of liberation. Action that does not lead to the knowledge of self, Atma Janana, fails to direct us to liberation. So by performing action, the mind becomes pure and then alone knowledge of self appears leading to a state of inaction, a state that transcends the realm of action. So in this context then, one could talk of two kinds of inaction. Inaction within the realm of everyday ex existence arising out of ignorance. Second, inaction that one attains only after one gets liberated. Play Obidda Jonito Nushkarmo or Mukko Lap Korapor Mukto Purusher Nushkarmo, a Duton Mudde Krishno, Partoko Korchen. Action is ineliminably associated with our everyday ex existence. Some of the actions as recommend, recommended in the Vedas are obligatory, nitya karma, some are occasional, and some are dependent on one's wish to fulfill some purpose. So, nitya karma, naimitya karma, and kamma karma. It seems that one cannot get rid of performing some action or other. Karma na kore amader pakhe beche thaka shambhav noy. Depending on one's mental disposition, one is led to perform some action. One could, however, deceive oneself by restraining one's sense organs, but thinking of the objects of these sense organs all the while. Krishna Purishkar bullets in Jetakta Pratarana. Jami, Ami. By the Jagot Take, Amar Indrio Guluke Tulenici, Kinto Shop Shoi, She Indrio Bobgo Bishagloni, and Bapti, Tintakot Protarana, the tag donor. So external restraint of senses is not enough. There must be the presence of knowledge of self accompanying the restraining of senses. It is only when the restraining is seeped through the knowledge that the agent performs the action without being attached to it. The moral is that there is no alternative to performing action. Performing action is morally better than everyday inaction. Extreme form of everyday inaction would render even our bodily existence impossible. If ethics and well-being are essentially related to action, and if there is no alternative to action, then ethics becomes essential to our existence. Ethics becomes indispensable. Now comes the question concerning the modality of action. Kormo chara thakte parabona bojagalo. Into a kormo ta ki, kon dhorane kormo, among shati ki have a kormo. Action generates consequence, and the agent lives through the consequence, and this chain goes on. Then the agent would be bound up within the web of action and result ad infinitum. Kormo tar fall bhog. Kitu 
Akishati, one cannot get rid of action. So Krishna's prescription is to perform action with the aim of generating love in God. Action gets tagged with one's varna and ashrama. So one should perform action defeating to one's varna and ashrama. And all these actions are to be performed without being attached to their consequences. The consequences being offered to God. Nana bhave Krishna bodhana chesta kutchen orjun ke. Kakuno kub tattik jukti dikchen. Kakuno abar kub shay tattik jukti ke compliment korat jonno. Kichu shahoj kore kathao bolchen. Ehi jay consequences being offered to God. Ehi kathao jay oiyot thi bolechen. Tere thika chik. Tumi karmo korcho kintu karmo phale tumi spriha ba akang kathya ke tumi mukta hote paat chana. ठीक आचे ए जे ए जे कॉर्मेट जो फॉल छुटा आमा के समर्थ पन करो आमा के दाव तभी तुम्ही तले निजेर कथा आर भाव बिना निजेर ये कृतो कॉर्मेट फॉलो भोगेर कथा आर भाव बिना कृष्णा एल्यूड्स तू डी वैदिक आइडिया दैट डी क्रिएटर ब्रह्मा क्रिएटेड डी डिफरेंट वर्णस एंड आल्सो डी यज्ञा एंड टोल्ड the gods will bless the people with rain resulting in production of food grains, etc. Since the gods shower on us the choicest things with which we survive and get nourished, all these should be consumed because whatever you are, we are consuming, we should consume only after offering these to gods. One is considered a thief if one consumes for himself without offering it to God. One is the Vedas were created by the ultimate self, Paramatman. The Yajnas were created by the Vedas. The clouds were created by the Yajnas. And food was created by cloud. You can see the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, allusion to to the uh, uh, nature, to the uh, to the natural, you know, things uh, that nourish us. Thus, the Vedas are well settled in yajnas. If one does not partake in this series of actions, he would fail to have a significant life. Just after this, he all Krishna also talks about a person. Who has attained self knowledge, who has attained, you know, Atma Janana, and that person does not need any karma. So, the idea, at least for us, for ordinary people, Krishna's prescription is one has to perform action, but without being attached to the consequence. Only thus one is led to moksha. There are instances of such people in history, like Janaka, etc. He is Krishna is referring to some historical personalities uh, 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 about whom we we get to know from uh, different stories depicted in uh, different Upanishads. And one such one such example uh, Krishna gives is that of Janaka. It is said that Janaka is a king. In, I think in Vidhadaranya Upanishad, huh? there's a long story. That goes that Janaka is a king, but he, he is a king of a different kind. He has attained Atma Janana. Okay, so in the in, in the morning, he is you know looking after his state as a king, he is performing his duty as a king, he is performing his action as a king, and in the uh, latter half of the day, he is talking about Atma Janana, he is discussing her. Uh, the uh, nature of self with with uh, with many learned people, and there is there is uh, uh, you know uh, um, uh, uh, a saying that is that is uh, put to uh, Janaka's uh, 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 you know put to Janaka. Janaka says that I love my 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 kingdom, huh? uh, 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 you know 
more than I love myself. But, and here is the, here is the uh, 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 interesting comment, but even if my whole kingdom uh, 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 burns down, you know, it doesn't really affect me. So you see, an unbounded love, but no attachment. Okay. Such a person, person like Janaka, such a person performs action. So it's not that he's not performing action. Janaka is performing his action. Janaka is looking after his kingdom as it is his responsibility as a king. But, but he performs action in order to serve humanity. Loka Sangraha. Loka Sangraha me bartham. So, he, so in order to do Loka Sangraha, in order to serve people, such a person who has attained Atma Janana performs action. In another context, uh, 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 you know, Shankaracharya, while describing the action of, of an Atma Janani, of a person who has attained the knowledge of the self, say, uh, Shankaracharya is saying that Basantabal Loka Hitam Charanta. He is doing Loka Hita. He is only serving the people. Hmm. As spring, the season spring, you know, is, is, uh, 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 is beneficial to all of us, okay, without expecting anything from us, Basantabat. Huh? Similarly, a person who has attained the knowledge of self, who has attained Atma Janana, okay, performs uh, Loka Hita like that. But his actions, the actions performed by this person, by the Atma Janani, okay, does not bear any consequence and he is not bound by the consequence. Why? As, as you know, uh, uh, a burnt out seed does not produce a sprout as a burnt out seed, Dagdha Bija, Dagdha Bija teke jamon chara utpanna hoena, tiktenni jar karmo, Example, Janaka. Usually people, I mean Krishna Kano, Janaka example the chin. Usually people tend to follow the great men. So Krishna gives an example of Janaka to Arjuna. And also he gives an example of himself. Krishna discloses about himself that he does not have anything to achieve. Nor is he bound by any obligation. Still he continues to perform action. And this he does only for the benefit of humanity. Loka Sangraha. If Krishna stops performing action, then others might follow him, and so there will be a complete disaster. Social balance would be disturbed, and people would move to self-destruction. So, so we have to continue performing action. But then, the point that Krishna raises again and again is that how we perform the action is the most important thing. Thus, two kinds of people perform actions. One, knowledgeable, and the other, ignorant. The knowledgeable people perform actions without any attachment to the consequence, only for the sake of benefit of others. And the ignorant people perform actions being attached to the consequence. The knowledgeable people will inspire the ignorant ones. This is what Krishna hopes. The ignorant has eye sense, ahankara, ahankaroti iti abhimana. And so he takes himself to be the doer, ami korchi, ekajer ami hoche korta. 
এইটা যারা ইগনোরেন্ট তাদের ভাব দা আই সেন্স এই অহং ভাব arises because of bodily and sensuous relation being the evolute of three gunas like sattva rajas and tamas once a person realizes that his self is free from these gunas he also loses his i sense only these ignorant people get attached to the consequence of action so the idea of non attachment is explained in terms of surrender sharanagati non attachment comes when one could surrender the consequences to god ami korlam kaj kintu ei karmer somosto phol ami ishshore samarpon korlam she kotha krishna bolchen without being overwhelmed by either keenness or pain arjuna should fight only this way one can free oneself from this i sense they feel people who who uh, can perform actions you know without having the i sense they feel that they don't own the action or the consequence other kinds of people are failures everybody performs action following his own nature it is difficult to change them with advice this technology is this both attachment and aversion raga and dvesha are opposed to the path to good everybody should follow his own varna and ashrama duties participating in the duties of other varna and ashrama brings fall to people swadharme nidhanam shreya paradharmo bhayavah sometimes people even unwillingly perform vicious action and this is due to being overpowered by kama and krodha and these kama and krodha emerge out of rajas quality this kama veils the mind and never gets satisfied there is no end to kama kama is an enemy to the knowledgeable person this kama overpowers our sense mind and intellect and misleads people krishna advises arjuna to restrain kama from body to senses from sense to mind from mind to intellect each is subtler than the other and the self is subtler than all of these sukshma tama only by knowing this self one could destroy tama along with with its root so not only destroying uh, uh, occasional karmas but also destroying the cause the origin of karma this discourse krishna is saying that whatever i am saying whatever i am telling you arjuna this discourse has a long tradition starting from sun god and so on krishna himself taught this to sun god and the tradition follows since this tradition got extinct krishna out of his love retold this entire uh, 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 discourse to arjuna krishna himself has been born many times before so also has arjuna krishna is aware of all these previous births unfortunately arjuna forgot everything about his previous births births because of his being overwhelmed by maya krishna though the master of everything activates power of maya and with the help of the three powers world being governed by these three qualities assumes a body to enforce dharma and defeat the force of adharma krishna appears having a body he appears in every age to protect the virtuous and destroy the vicious yada yada hi dharmasya glani bhavati bharata 
अभ्युत्थानम अधर्म से तद आत्मानं सृजाम्य हम आत्मानं अहम सृजामी नॉलेज ऑफ दिस एसेंस ऑफ कृष्णा लीड्स वन टू लिबरेशन सो सो कृष्णा इज आल्सो रिवीलिंग हिमसेल्फ talking about his own nature to arjuna knowledge of this essence of krishna leads one to liberation gets free from the cycle of birth and death it is true that people follow different paths like knowledge action to gain consequence etc they acquire the result but people who pray to different gods end up praying krishna for all the gods are manifestations of krishna even if people perform actions dependent on varna and ashrama they are actually addressed to krishna for it is krishna who created the varna and ashrama chatur varnam maya srishtam guna karma vibhagasha krishna theoretically speaking is eternal and not an agent in this world it is only from the perspective of maya that krishna created the four varnas etc this is why krishna is not bound by actions and their consequences he who knows krishna in this way also becomes free from the bounds of action and janaka etc are historical examples who did follow who could follow this path knowledge of action and non action is essential one is required to acquire knowledge of action that ought to be performed action that should be avoided and non action so there are three categories action that ought to be performed action that should should be avoided and non action it is to be noted that all ideas of action are valid only from the perspective of maya as one traveling in a train seems to see the trees outside moving in the opposite direction maya similarly entices us and the prolubdha kare to see the opposite thus we tend to see action in self where self really is not an agent nor a consumer right the real nature of self is like this the wise man's action is free from karma and i sense ahang bodha and all his actions have been burned by the fire of knowledge when a person having acquired this knowledge performs action without any attachment to its consequence remains always in a state of happiness and does not resort to anything related to the sensible world such a person gets engaged in action but is not the doer notice this here is an example krishna is giving where a person is engaged in action but not the doer such a wise person restrains his body and sense does not possess any eye sense and performs actions only to maintain his bodily existence thus knowledge turns one into sanyasi now krishna defines sanyasi as like this a perform a, a person okay who could restrain his body and sense who does not possess any eye sense okay and performs actions only minimally to maintain his bodily existence such a person such a sanyasi becomes happy with whatever he gets stays calm in both hot and cold does not have any enemy though he performs action to maintain his body this does not bind him for his actions are burnt by knowledge as a burnt seed does not produce a sprout when this wise person performs action like yajna even this yajna does not produce any result for this person all the elements including the yajna are of the nature of brahman everything is of the nature of self 
So everything involved in performing yajna is also of the nature of self, of the nature of Brahman. For such a wise person, even this yajna is not action, for it does not produce any result that would bind the person. Making use of the allegory of yajna, one could hold that the wise person offers his own self to the altar of fire that is of the nature of the supreme self. So notice how Krishna uh, uh, very intelligently uh, alters you know, the significance of the word yajna. So in yajna, what we do, we sacrifice. What do we sacrifice? We sacrifice my, my little self, my small self, okay? my, my attachments. All these I sacrifice in the yajna. So one sees the qualified self as the unqualified supreme self. The entire act of sacrifice or yajna turns out to be of the nature of knowledge. So this entire, you know, uh, uh, significance of yajna uh, is explained in terms of knowledge, knowledge of self, atma jnana. Some, what do we, uh, what do we uh, offer in the sacrifice? Some offer their auditory sense. Some offer their uttered words. Some others their entire bodily existence to the altar of fire. Thus, yajna could be of different kinds, offering things, participating in penance, practicing yogic prescriptions, studying and understanding the shastras. All these are different kinds of yajna. And the result of this kind of yajna is the nectar that the performer receives and consumes, following which he realizes the knowledge of Brahma. The main spirit behind yajna is why, while I am sacrificing something to the altar in the fire, actually I am sacrificing my eye sense. Na mama. Idang swaha na mama. This is not mine. So uh, what, I am, what I am trying to sacrifice is, is my narrowness, my mindness. My ahankara. A person who does not perform yajna in this sense fails both in the empirical world and the world above. Since ultimately all the different kinds of yajnas lead to knowledge, the knowledge yajna, jnana yajna, is superior to other kinds of yajnas. One who has sincerity, honest query, and respect for the teacher who himself is a wise person is bestowed with this knowledge by the teacher. Once one acquires this knowledge, one cannot lose it. This knowledge burns out all our actions and so these actions fail to produce any consequence. A person Desirous of liberation must attain this knowledge. There remains no other alternative. Now, is there any contradiction in suggesting renunciation of action and also advocating performance of action? Mone hote pare, je Krishna shob virudhi kotha bolchen. Agba bolchen karmo na kore kono upay nei. Agba bolchen karmo theke amader mukti pete hobe. Ebong jini mukto purush, tini karmo theke shompurno mukto. Is there any contradiction? Krishna's reply is in negative. Now, no contradiction. When one talks of renunciation of action, one talks of freeing oneself from the bond of the attachment to the consequence of the action. When thus one acquires the knowledge of self, his actions do not bind him with the consequences. But when one talks of performance of action, one suggests performance of actions according to one's varna and ashrama. And this too, without any clinging to the consequence of the action. 
it has been acknowledged that one cannot stay without performing action in this world of senses. Thus, the entire force of the teaching in the present context is to perform action, but in a certain manner. If ethics is concerned with human action, then certainly Gita is a work on ethics. It has proposed its idea of ethical values. The idea of action needs to be understood in Gita's perspective. First, the kind of action that Krishna talks about are the actions enjoined by one's Varna and Ashrama. Varna duties exemplify one's duty to one's community. Each community is bound with some ideals and performances. There is a division of labor that is maintained by different Varnas. Of course, there are some general duties that each person is supposed to follow irrespective of one's Varna. Thus, a balance is maintained between one's obligation to one's own Varna and to the society in general. Ashrama signifies, Ashrama exemplifies individual ethics where an individual strives at excellence in the virtues pertaining to the specific stage the individual is in. Each individual is supposed to go through different stages in life, having duties specific to each of these stages to perform. This entire socio-individual moral framework is designed to have a society consisting of individuals striving towards attaining an ideal state, namely moksha. Insofar as the ideal in Gita, in Bhagavad Gita is concerned, moksha does not necessarily has to be understood in terms of some mystical ideas. Moksha certainly does not stand for asceticism. Akta Kotha Purishkar Gita Te Boiraggo Shadhane Mukti She Amar Noy Ko Purishkar Bhave Krishna Bare Bare E Kotha Urjun Ke Boli Chen Moksha certainly does not stand for asceticism, giving up all worldly activities and staying secluded in one's own core of being. One could very much strive at the ideal existence in the midst of the vagaries of the world. Ei jagoter majhei, ei kolahal purno jagot, ei dondo purno shangsharer majhei mukti shambhav. Ei kotha Krishna bar bar kore Arjun ke bujiye chen. Ebang judder je je puribesh, sheta tari tari ei bokto beri ekta ekta kabbik roop matlo. Actions are recommended. But they are to be performed in a certain manner. Absence of action in one's life is certainly not practically possible, nor it is morally desirable, because it does not take one to the path of the ideal existence. But then action has to be performed in a way so that the tentacles of the result of the action does not ensnare the agent. What is striking in Gita in this cost in this context is that an idea of agency is offered where the agent, though performs the action, does not own the action and its consequence. Pintu in the Aki Shate Ami Kach Kurti eatable to Parvona. Can a Hongkar Siti Ashaja Kale Korme Bondhonami Avodho? It is true that an agent is responsible for his action, but Krishna seems to talk about a talk about an agential responsibility where responsibility is shared by the social setup of Varna and Ashrama. The individual is responsible 
for after all he has decided to follow his varna and ashrama duties but these varna and ashrama duties are demanded of him because of his belonging to a particular varna and a particular ashrama this is where the i sense becomes crucial if the i sense were the commanding feature aham bodh aham kartai jodi mool hoto then the doer as an i could be ascribed a full blooded responsibility but the modality of action that krishna prescribes drives away completely this i sense karta aham one could of course ask that if we lessen the weight of responsibility then it strikes at the root of moral evaluation once action is morally evaluated on the when when one performs the action with full responsibility freely consciously notice in krishna's model the person does possess the knowledge that the i sense is to be gotten rid of and the thrust of krishna's teaching is to show how to acquire this knowledge this knowledge uh, where you know where uh, um, i sense is completely gone there is certainly a cognitive responsibility on the part of the agent the agent does not end up performing an action without i sense just by fluke this justifies our talk of morality in cases where the agent is prescribed to lose his i sense at the same time this agent does perform the action without i sense of course without owning either the action or the consequence tini malik non tini kaaj ta korchen ebong kaaj tar phol hobe kintu kono tari malik tini non and this is what krishna calls performing an action without attachment to its consequence karme pravritti hobe kintu ahong bodh thakbe na so the action will be performed and the consequence will appear but the agent does not lay any claim over them what happens actually here is the change in the outlook of the agent but does this idea of performing action without being attached to the consequence license a person to engage in heinous actions without any remorse holer kotha na bhebe ami gai che tai kore gelam etai ki bola hocche ekhane notice the idea of non attachment enters into the discourse in the context of attaining the ideal state of existence moksha this talk about an ideal state of existence is an assumption around which most of the classical indian philosophical systems move this is an ideal set before man by our ancestors questioning this ideal would take us to a deliberation on the philosophy of man that different traditions envisage to which i shall get back soon thus the ethical ideal that gita endorses is an action is an ethics of action without an attachment to the result of the action notice the meeting of the individual ethics and collective ethics here the agent performs the action in a particular manner and the actions are enjoined by the stations of varna and ashrama if one looks at the duties of different varnas and ashramas one could clearly see dual direction of the duties namely some duties towards the excellence of the individual and some other duties towards the flourishing of the collective for me the ethical ideal formulated in gita consists of this balance between the individual and the collective mingling the demands of the individual and the collective is also manifest in the emphasis on dharma of the individual to oneself and also to the greater community of which of which the individual is a member it is to be noted 
that this greater community, this larger community, contains even the animals and objects of nature. In Gita, we find a uh, comment like Shuni uh, Chaiva, Shwapa Kecha, Pandita, Samadarshina. The scholars, the wise people, you know, uh, uh, look at a dog, cow, okay, uh, uh, in the same way as he treats others. And so you see that that there is an attempt uh, to 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 uh, 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 maintain a balance between the requirements of an individual ethics of individual excellence as well as a communitarian ethics. If this is the ethical ideal professed in Gita, then one could inquire about the idea of well-being that Gita could be said to uphold. If the minimal sense of well-being contains good for me, as I mentioned in the beginning, then are we talking about the thing that is being good to me or my experience of having the thing that is good for me? For Gita, this distinction between the experience and the experienced is not tenable since the agent thinks of the good for him without possessing the I sense. The agent in that sense loses the difference between the two and the experiential aspect of the agent sips into the object of experience. This fluidity between the two is the mark of agency without owning the action. And this is the, this is the you know, uh, 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 take home uh, uh, of Krishna's message. Uh, the fluidity between the two is the mark of agency without owning the action. And so utilitarian calculation of rationalizing of one's pleasure over the alternatives does not count. Well-being on Gita's view is not a matter of compensation. That is compensating one pleasure for a greater good in one's life. If one wants to talk about compensation at all, then it is a compensation of being bound in the cycle of life and death over attaining the sta ideal state of existence. If well-being is taken to mean that what contributes to the significance and quality of human life, then uh, and this involves non-humans as well, then Gita's message to humans is an important contribution to its well-being. This idea of well-being extends itself to the community at large. The flourishing of a state is the result, is the direct result of actions performed by the individuals as members of the state. Gita's well-being covers state's well-being as well. Rashtra Hita, Rashtra Kalyana. And it is no wonder because the entire discourse takes place in the context of a war over a claim on kingship. Remember Sanjaya's last statement. If the knowledge of Krishna and Arjuna's skill to perform action without att attachment join together, the state flourishes. One must not think that this in disinterested action leads to, leads to asceticism. It leads to intense activity for the well-being of the individual and the society. Atmano Moksharthan this is in tune with Mahabharata, where the great sages were great experts on statecraft. Morality and political affairs of state are not independent of each other. Notice also the wider significance of the term yajna that Krishna gives. It involves not only offerings in the altar of fire, it also means studying shastras. Shastra Jajna, restraining one's sense organs, etc. So the ideal of Yajna is giving up one's position and offering that to the gods, signifying the death of I sense. Let me end my discussion with a brief presentation of the metaphysics of man that works behind the idea of well-being as advocated by Bhagavad Gita. This view of man and his place in the world is set in the background against which Krishna's ideal, Krishna's idea of an individual performing 
without the eye sense gets significance ebar ami sei alochonay jabo jekhane manush manusher sthiti ei jagote take emon bhabe dekha hoyeche jar poriprekkhitei ei je krishner bar bar ei kotha je karmo korte hobe kintu nishkam karmo korte hobe emon ahankar bad diye karmo korte hobe বর্ণ এবং আশ্রম আশ্রমের যে ধর্ম সেই ধর্ম পালন করতে হবে এই কথাটা এই উপদেশ যুক্তিযুক্ত হয়ে দাঁড়ায় এই এই মেটাফিজিক্স অফ ম্যানের ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড সেই মেটাফিজিক্স অফ ম্যান কি হতে পারে তার একটা সংক্ষিপ্ত পরিচয় এখানে আমি দেওয়ার চেষ্টা করছি বারবার করে কৃষ্ণ মুক্তির কথা বলছেন আত্মজ্ঞানের কথা বলছেন হ্যাঁ মুখ্য লাভের কথা বলছেন যারা আত্মজ্ঞানী তাদের কর্ম কিরকম হয় সে কথা বলছেন কাজেই এই যে এই যে মুখ্য এই যে মুক্তি এই যে আত্মজ্ঞান যাকে আমরা আদর্শ বলে ধরে নিয়েছি হম অন্তত কৃষ্ণ যার যাকে সামনে রেখেই অর্জুনকে উপদেশগুলো দিচ্ছেন সেই আইডিয়াল এক্সিস্টেন্সটা কিরকম এবং সেই আইডিয়াল এক্সিস্টেন্সের ধারণা থেকে মানুষ সম্বন্ধে আমরা আমরা মানুষের প্রকৃতি বা স্বভাব সম্পর্কে আমরা কি ধারণা পেতে পারি সেইটা সংক্ষিপ্ত এবার আলোচনা করব এবং যেহেতু গীতা কোন নির্দিষ্ট প্রস্থানের গ্রন্থ নয় এবং বোঝাই যাচ্ছে যে নানা প্রস্থানে নানা চিন্তাধারার একটা মিলন ক্ষেত্র রচিত হয়েছে ভগবত গীতার চিন্তার মধ্যে কাজে এই যে এই যে মানুষের দর্শনের কথা বলবো সেটাও কোনো নির্দিষ্ট প্রস্থান ভিত্তিক নয় সামগ্রিকভাবে ভারতীয় সংস্কৃতিতে সামগ্রিকভাবে ভারতীয় দার্শনিক চিন্তায় সামগ্রিকভাবে ভারতীয় যে ধর্মচিন্তা সেই ধর্মচিন্তায় কোন ধরনের মানুষের কথা উঠে এসেছে সেই কথাই আমি আলোচনা করব ইট ইজ ওয়েল নোন দ্যাট দ্য ফাউন্ডিং ফাদার্স অফ ক্লাসিক্যাল ইন্ডিয়ান ফিলসফি স্টিয়ার্ড দেয়ার ইন্টেলেকচুয়াল ডিসকোর্স around what they thought an ideal life should be like this ideal life was not merely a matter of speculation it was more of a practical necessity the entire philosophical pursuit in spite of its brilliant analysis and nuanced argumentative deliberation carries the unmistakable mark of pragmatic constraint attainment of a life that is worth living in this background naturally the concept of man hover the philosophical landscape as it is usually done man in classical indian philosophy is thought of having two aspects the material or the natural aspect and the spiritual aspect the natural side consists of elements acts and dispositions that belong to man's physical body either originating directly from body through the mind or from the external world the spiritual side on the other hand consists of elements that do not have their origin in the physical body and the external world these two aspects remain in close relation though the exact nature of this relation is a matter of intense dispute one could start the discourse by proposing that it is the unique i feeling the i sense that i was talking about i feeling that characterizes one's body and mind and whatever alterations happen there even in the unreflective stage the presence of i feeling could be assumed even though not pronounced and what distinguish one's own bodily and mental changes from those of others this i feeling also explains one's sense of possession of extra bodily things and her treatment of those things with a peculiar tenderness that is absent in her interaction with other things kati ami amar sharir ebong sharira jato je karma ba boishishto ebong ami আমার সম্পত্তি বলে যাদেরকে মনে করি যাকে মনে করি তাকে আমি যেভাবে দেখি নিশ্চয়ই আমি অন্য পৃথিবীর অন্যান্য বস্তু দ্রব্যকে সেভাবে দেখি না এই এই দেখার পিছনে কিন্তু আমার 
একটা আই সেন্স কাজ করে ইভেন ইফ দ্য আই ফিলিং ইজ ইন এলিয়েন রিলেটেড টু দ্য ফিজিক্যাল মেন্টাল কমপ্লেক্স ইট ইজ পসিবল ফর দ্য আই থ্রু প্রগ্রেসিভ রিফ্লেকশন টু ডিসোসিয়েট ইটস সেলফ ফ্রম দ্য এন্টাঙ্গেলমেন্ট অফ নেচার এন্ড আফটার দিস ডিসোসিয়েশন what remains in the reflective stage is the physico mental changes and the external world with no i hood or mindness attached to it amar eta tokhon thakbe na ei 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 obosthay jawa somvob bole bharatiyo darshane bola hoyeche although normally the material and the spiritual side remain fused with each other this fusion can be dissociated through progressive reflection where the physical mental complex undergoes subtler and subtler changes and only at the highest stage the split could be discovered in its entirety contrary to the materialist or naturalistic explanation of man classical indian philosophers emphasized some sort of direct realization or perception of whatever the account of man and her relation to the world they offered majority of the classical indian philosophers barring few exceptions were not against the naturalistic method of explanation in fact at the level of manana at the level of you know uh, argumentation they did not have any other alternative at the post manana stage Many of these philosophers talked about attempts to perceive the nature of man and his relation to the environing world directly. Needed dhyasam. The exact nature of this direct awareness is amenable to different interpretations. For some, this post-manana stage is cognitive. All through, it is a matter of progressive realization. Others think that it is a stage of religious communion with the spirit that undergoes several steps one has to be careful in formulating the nature of the unity of the spirit and matter that constitutes man a unity ta kirokom spiritual side o ache abar tar natural ba physical side o ache if this is simply a matter of togetherness then it would imply that we are aware of these two elements in man in their exclusivity it however is not possible to experience the two in their distinctness we are not sure what there was in the name of spirit whose departure has turned the body into a dead matter nor are we sure of what the matter is even if to whatever extent it could be dissociated matter once the spirit appropriates it bears the mark of the spirit's conceptual repertoire in this picture spiritual realization is not a mystery at the reflective stage when one looks at pain from a distance as it were one could tolerate it as she does not own it even if the pain is hard you see we are we are talking about not owning my own experience at every stage in this progressive dissociation the earlier lower stage that is transcended is retrospectively viewed as the stage where the spirit was not present at the higher state at every stage the two sides the natural and the spiritual though distinct come to be related to each other thus the spirit is always found in unison with matter till it is realized as dissociated from and thus transcending the unity at earlier stages so in these earlier stages by remaining fused with the matter the spirit appears to be quasi material there grows a demand for the spirit to be dissociated that is a spirit or matter spiritual or natural এই দুটোর মধ্যে অ্যাসোসিয়েশন এবং ডিসোসিয়েশনের যে ডাইনামিক্স সেটাকে বোঝার চেষ্টা করা হচ্ছে 
is to be understood in its proper perspective. In a way, my body is an item of nature, like many other items, and this body can be explained by experts the same way other items of the nature can be explained. But the same body is treated as unique and disparate when I treat it as my body and look at it with a delicate fondness. Although a part of nature, my living body seems to have an autonomy that the spirit possesses. And in this sense, my body is more spiritual than other items of nature. The larger implication of this is that, except in the final stage where the dissociation is final and the spirit exists in its self-containedness, shosthito chaitanya, during all other all the earlier stages of dissociation, the carries the matter with it. Though at every stage the matter gets thinner and thinner. So, AJ, AJ dissociation is J Goti, she Goti, the protect the stage in the Madechi, J Upur stage, Utche, matter Rache, the matter gets thinner and thinner. Our matter, Arutu Balakarabul Tegele, matter gets spiritualized. Or that matter, J matter. Thus, when the physical body gets more spiritual, other items of nature get transformed. As the spirit undergoes gradual dissociation, the body along with its changes could be looked at as nearer the spirit proper. Insofar as perception, memory, thought, etc., are not dissociated from the corresponding objects, the relevant situation or experience may be described as object perceived, object remembered, etc. Chadharan kothai amra e kothagulu boli na object perceived, object remembered, etc. But whence, but once these objects are experienced in dissociation, jakun dissociation er pothe spirit onekte egiye geche, tokun kintu are আমাদের অভিজ্ঞতাও পাল্টে গেছে এই ম্যাটেরিয়াল ওয়ার্ল্ড কে দেখা দৃষ্টিভঙ্গিও পাল্টে গেছে তখন কিন্তু আমরা আর অবজেক্ট পারসিভড বা অবজেক্ট রিমেম্বারড বলি না বরং যেমন পারসিভিং দা অবজেক্ট রিমেম্বারিং দা অবজেক্ট মানে কি ইমপ্লাইং দ্যাট দিস অবজেক্টস ল্যাক অটোনমি দ্যাট ইজ দা হলমার্ক অফ দা স্পিরিট তাহলে অটোনমি অফ দা ম্যাটেরিয়াল অটোনমি অফ দা ফিজিক্যাল ইউ নো লুজেস its 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 edge it is true that even this last vestige of naturalness will be removed with the growing demand of the spirit to realize itself in its complete majestic self containedness shasthito nijei royeche nijer moddhe thus all mental acts as associated with the objects of nature are themselves the items of nature. It is only in introspection their knownness is revealed and so distances itself from nature. There is a further demand where these mental acts mature into recognition of itself as items of spirituality. It is undeniable that knowledge refers to an item in nature in the sense that the natural item acts as a causal determinant. But the act of referring is knowledge's own function, implying that the knowledge might not also refer at least the way it wants. This is evident in an illusory experience where knowledge refers to another item, or in hallucination where knowledge creates its object, which is not a causal determinant of that very knowledge. Similar is the case in constructed imagination and thinking, where knowledge is not determined by nature, rather it moves by its introspective awareness, though necessarily dependent on first level mental acts, is not causally determined by nature. Introspection in this sense could be called overnatural. More importantly, though introspection refers to the first level mental experience, it does so freely, 
introspection is not obligated to refer to it. The nature of the reference that introspection bears to the first level mental experience is pseudo reference, for there is no necessity for introspection to refer at all. This is when introspection is realized as completely dissociate spirit. One could also talk about dissociation of the spirit insofar as the volitional aspect of human behavior is concerned. But the dissociation of the volitional spirit would take a different direction that from the cognitive spirit. In cognitive dissociation, the spirit gradually withdraws itself from the naturalistic bondage. This is not true of volition, for volition by nature is directed to nature. Volition, generally speaking, consists in making some attempt to bring change in nature following a rule and with a definitive purpose. In this circumstance, the volitional dissociation, in order to realize the spirit in it, consists in gradual withdrawal from all kinds of naturalistic treatment of both the body and the extra bodily, extra bodily nature serving my naturalistic interests. One step removed, man distinguishes his self from animals by transcending his bare biological interests. Even if at this stage the human behavior is conscious, it is not self-conscious and human actions are fully determined by the natural forces of attachment and aversion. This self-consciousness further demands to move beyond the shackles of natural determination towards the realization of the spirit proper. This dissociation of the spirit manifests itself in disinterested action, action but without detachment, nishkama karma. Positively describing, volitional dissociation consists in the attempt to rearrange the nature not being determined by one's naturalistic motive and more importantly considering the other as worthy of consideration as I am not manipulating the other to serve my naturalistic interest. That was all possible use, you in plural, to me, Tumra, Chakol Manush, I, and there is great leveling. Volitional association in spiritual cascade breaks the barrier between I and Thou, making room for I am Thou. Needless to say, spiritual activities in its volitional dissociation could be directed to me as I, but then this I is one instance of the possible you in plural. In this perspective, persons become transnatural. If one tries to look at the set of persons from this transnatural perspective as a unitary whole, one might want to call it God or whatever other name one wants to use. And in this sense, spiritual volition makes room for religion. Whereas for cognitive realization of the transnatural spirit, steps involving introspection and beyond are to be taken recourse to, spiritual volitional realization makes this realization real in the sense of constructing a unitary person by discovering its autonomous spiritual nature. It is true that social morality and social religion are formulated in definite socio-political and cultural contexts and as a consequence of which people react to these codes that lie in traditional scriptures, the distant and final authority lays with the spiritual volition. One could similarly talk about progressive dissociation of the spirit regarding feeling and emotion. Dissociation 
আমাদের ফিলিং এর দিক থেকে ডিসোসিয়েশনের কথা বলতে পারি দেয়ার আর ফিলোসফার্স হু হ্যাভ ওয়ার্কড আউট ইন ডিটেইল দ্য মোর এন্ড মোর সাটল ফর্মস অফ দ্য ইমোটিভ লাইফ অফ ম্যান দ্য ইমোটিভ লাইফ অফ ম্যান মাই টেক ওয়াইল আন্ডারগোইং দ্য প্রগ্রেসিভ ডিসোসিয়েশন অফ দ্য স্পিরিট আদার্স হ্যাভ ট্রাইড টু ইন্টারপ্রেট দ্য ডিসোসিয়েশন অফ স্পিরিট ডাইরেক্টেড toward feeling and emotion as an alternative to the cognitive realization of the dissociation of the spirit by offering an alternative aesthetic language loaded with emotive nuances samagra gauriya vaishnav darshaner je bhittibhumi seta hocche ei progressive dissociation of the spirit ke ei emotional language e ha tar bistrito bisleshoner madhye byakha kora if the picture that has been sketched in the earlier paragraphs concerning the nature of man as expressed in classical indian philosophy is a tenable one je kotha bola holo manusher swarup niye je 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 boktobbo ta bola holo seta jodi shotti amra amra jodi mene ni shikar kori ni then it suggests that the essence of the spirit in man lies in its progressive dissociation from the natural in man manusher moddhe jeta prakrit sharira ba jodo ache tar theke dhire dhire mukti labh kore sei je the spirit in man take onubhav kora take prakash kora take jana ei tai kintu mul kotha but ei je ei je dissociation er kotha bola hocche ei dissociation kintu একটাকে বাদ দিয়ে আরেকটা ডিসোসিয়েশনের কথা বলা হচ্ছে না বাট দিস ডিসোসিয়েশন ইস নট এট দা কস্ট অফ দ্য ভ্যালু দ্যাট দ্য ন্যাচারাল ইন ম্যান কন্ট্রিবিউট ইন নর্মাল টক অফ ডিসোসিয়েশন সেপারেশন টেকস প্লেস ইগনোরিং ওয়ান অফ দ্য পার্ট ইস ইন দ্য ডিভোর্স একটা আরেকটাকে ছেড়ে চলে যাচ্ছে একটার কোনো গুরুত্ব নেই কেমন একটা বৈপরীত্য এরকম বলা হচ্ছে সাধারণত কিন্তু এইখানে যখন ডিসোসিয়েশনের কথা বলছি তখন কিন্তু তার তাৎপর্যটা অন্যরকম সাম কাইন্ড অফ ডিসপ্যারিটি ইস দ্য মার্ক অফ ডিসোসিয়েশন হোয়েন উই টক অ্যাবাউট ইট ইন কমন পারলেন্স দিস কুড বি কলড এক্সক্লুসিভ ডিসোসিয়েশন আমাদের সাধারণ অভিজ্ঞতায় আমরা যে ডিসোসিয়েশনের কথা বলি যে বিযুক্তির কথা বলি যে বিচ্ছেদের কথা বলি সেটা কি আমরা বলতে পারি এক্সক্লুসিভ ডিসোসিয়েশন কিন্তু যখন এই the natural in man are the spiritual in man tader dissociation er kotha bola hocche shetake amra bolte pari inclusive dissociation the classical indian philosophers while talking about dissociation are more inclined to talk about what could be called inclusive dissociation perhaps barring some of the metaphysicians having a strong leaning towards monistic world view a large number of philosophers of classical india took great interest in the naturalistic methodology while overcoming the natural while when they talk about dissociation of the spirit this is an inclusive dissociation in the sense that in the different stages of progressive dissociation the natural the material gets thinner and thinner and as a result the natural gets transformed at a jodo বা শারীর সেটা তার একটা রূপান্তর ঘটে গেছে সেই স্পিরিচুয়ালের প্রভাবে ইন সো ফর অ্যাজ ইন্ডিয়ান কনসেপশন ম্যান ইজ কনসার্ন সোশিও মেটিরিয়াল ডেভেলপমেন্ট ইজ নেভার টু বি ইগনোর দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ডলি লাইফ ইজ অব এক্সট্রিম ইম্পর্টেন্স ফর ইট সাস্টেইনস এন্ড নারিশেস দ্য সোসাইটি ওয়ার দ্য ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল ক্যান গ্রো এন্ড ফুলফিল হার সেলফ টু দ্য ফুলেস্ট পসিবল এক্সটেন্ড সেই কারণেই বারবার করে কৃষ্ণ বর্ণ ধর্মের কথা এবং আশ্রম ধর্মের কথা কৃষ্ণকে বলেছেন এই অর্জুনকে বলেছেন that freedom that an individual exercises is aimed at maintaining the stability 
and balance of the society ebong borno ebong ashram dharmer pichune ei kotha tai kaaj koreche the naturalistic view as mentioned earlier starts from an alienated man and gives an account of how that alienated man through the exercise of his freedom can reappropriate himself in a society that is exploitative of him it was a naturalistic view of man indian view on the other hand looks upon man as an individual constantly trying to identify himself with the society aiming at maintaining stability and balance in the society an art to identify oneself with the society is highlighted in the indian view and borno dharma ebong ashram dharmer pichone ei chinta ta bar bar kaaj koreche je kibhabe samajer ekta sammabostha bojay rakha jay ebong eki sathe byaktir byaktir je unnayon ha byaktir je prakash shetakeo kibhabe eksathe tar protio shraddha rakha jay ei dutuke balance korar ekta chesta kora hoyeche on the naturalistic view social change is a historical necessity where the individual breaks his alienation and gets the opportunity to express his full potentiality sometimes giving rise to a social revolution biplaber prasanga ashe shekhane according to the identification theory that that the, the classical indian view uh, 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 seems to you know advocate uh, there is an inherent tendency in the society to maintain its balance and stability in spite of occasional chaos society cannot be in a state of perpetual revolution the stability of a society can be torn apart at times either by foreign aggression or by internal fissures and mal adjustments and all these have happened in in uh, indian history but the society tries to get back to its usual course of stability and balance since then in spite of initial hiccups so many divergent and conflicting philosophical views developed on indian soil but on the whole all of them remained in peaceful coexistence giving rise to the wonderful mosaic of indian thought this is possible only because the classical indians think of the relation of an individual to society in terms of identification and not in terms of alienation tale ei je ei je manusher shorup ei bhabe je bharatiya sanskritite dekha hoyeche jekhane bar bar kore bola hocche je manusher pokkhe tar je bortoman je satta tar je bortoman ostittogoto je boishishto tar theke ekta unnatotor sattay she pouchhte pare kemon ebong shekhane pouchhono tai manusher charom kammo charom purushartho ei ei je kotha ta ke nana bhabe guchiye bhartiya darshane bola hoyeche tar poriprekkhitei kintu krishner je nishkam karmer je উপদেশ অর্জুন কে দিয়েছিলেন সেই পরিপ্রেক্ষিতে কিন্তু কৃষ্ণের নিষ্কাম কর্মের উপদেশ অর্থবহ হয়ে ওঠে কেন বারবার করে কৃষ্ণ বলছেন যে মুক্তির পথে যেতে হবে মোক্ষ লাভ করতে হবে আত্মজ্ঞান লাভ করতে হবে সেই আত্মজ্ঞান লাভ করার উপায় কি কিভাবে কিভাবে সেই পথে এগোনো যেতে পারে সেই পথে এগোনোর সেই পথে অগ্রস হওয়ার সময় কি কি বাধা আসতে পারে সেই বাধাগুলোকে কিভাবে অতিক্রম করা যায় তার নানা উপায়ের কথা পরবর্তী অনেক অধ্যায়গুলোতে কৃষ্ণ নানাভাবে সেগুলো ব্যাখ্যা করেছেন কৃষ্ণের কাছে অর্জুনের কাছে সেখানে কখনো তোমার ভক্তির কথা এসেছে হ্যাঁ এবং অন্যান্য নানা প্রসঙ্গ এসেছে কিন্তু এই যে এই যে ফিলসফি অফ ম্যান যেটা কাজ করছে এর পিছনে যে মানুষ একটা পরম পরম যে আদর্শ অবস্থা সে আদর্শ অবস্থায় পৌঁছানোটাই মানুষের কাছে চরম কাম্য কেমন এবং সেই পথে এগোতে হবে এবং সেই পথে এগোনোর জন্য যা যা দরকার সেটা করতে হবে এবং সেই প্রসঙ্গেই কিন্তু কৃষ্ণ অর্জুনকে এই নিষ্কাম 
কর্মের কথা বলেছেন কেমন সুতরাং এই এই যে ফিলসফি অফ ম্যান এর কথা আমরা বললাম সেই ফিলসফি অফ ম্যান কে ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ডে রেখে হ্যাঁ কৃষ্ণ তার নিষ্কাম ধর্মের কথা তার নিষ্কাম কর্ম কর্ম সম্পর্কে উপদেশের কথা অর্জুনকে বলেছেন এবং এর থেকেই কিন্তু কনসেপ্ট অফ ওয়েল বিং আমরা পাই এবং যেটা আমি বলার চেষ্টা করছি এই যে ওয়েল বিং এই ওয়েল বিং কিন্তু শুধু ব্যক্তিনিষ্ঠ ওয়েল বিং নয় এই ওয়েল বিংটা একটা সমাজগত ওয়েল বিং ও বটে একটা সমষ্টিগত ওয়েল বিং ও বটে যার কথা আমরা গীতার মধ্যে নানা ভাবে পাই কেমন এবং এবং যেটা যেটা পাওয়াটা হয়তো আশ্চর্যের নয় কেননা একটা রাজ্য কে পাবে হ্যাঁ এই বিতর্কেই তো যুদ্ধ এই বিতর্কের প্রসঙ্গেই তো যুদ্ধ এসেছিল এবং সেই যুদ্ধ ক্ষেত্রেই এই গীতার উপদেশ দেওয়া হয়েছিল কাজে এই গীতার উপদেশ নিষ্কাম কর্ম প্রসঙ্গে বিশেষ করে বলছি নিষ্কাম কর্মের যে এথিক্যাল আইডিয়াল হ্যাঁ সেটা কিন্তু কেবল ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল এক্সেলেন্স এর ক্ষেত্রেই প্রযোজ্য তা নয় এটা সোসাইটাল কমিউনিটেরিয়ান যে এক্সেলেন্স কমিউনিটেরিয়ান যে ওয়েল বিং হ্যাঁ তার ক্ষেত্র একই ভাবে প্রযোজ্য কাজে সেই দিক থেকে দেখতে গেলে গীতা ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল এথিক্স এরও কথা বলে এবং কালেকটিভ এথিক্স এরও কথা বলে আজকে আমি এখানেই থামছি Thank you sir for your valuable lecture. It has enriched us a lot. Uh, sir, you have explored the ethics of the Gita from a new point of view. Thank you very much sir. Now I request the participants to share their observations. Hello sir. Hi, Bolo. হ্যাঁ স্যার বলছি যে ওয়েল ওয়েলবিংকে যদি একটা গোল হিসেবে বা লক্ষ্য হিসেবে ধরা হয় হ্যালো স্যার শুনতে পাচ্ছেন স্যার আরেকটু আরেকটু জোরে বলো তো হ্যাঁ স্যার বলছি যে ওয়েলবিংকে যদি লক্ষ্য হিসেবে গোল হিসেবে ধরা হয় তাহলে আমরা উপায় হিসেবে নিষ্কাম কর্ম লোক সংগ্রহ এগুলোকে কি বলতে পারি এগুলো উপায় হ্যাঁ নিশ্চয়ই নিশ্চয়ই সেটাই সেটাই তো কৃষ্ণ বলার চেষ্টা করছেন যে কর্ম না করে আমরা থাকতে পারবো না কেমন আমাদের এমন কি যে আমাদের শারীরিক যে অস্তিত্ব সেটাও রক্ষা করতে পারবো না কর্ম আমাদের করতে হবে কিন্তু কোন কর্ম করব এবং কিভাবে সেই কর্ম করব সেইটা খুব গুরুত্বপূর্ণ এবং সেইটাই কৃষ্ণ বারবার করে অর্জুনকে বোঝানোর চেষ্টা করছেন এবং আমি আমি এভাবে বুঝছি যে এই নিষ্কাম কর্মের দ্বারা যেমন ব্যক্তির আত্মনিষ্ঠ উন্নয়ন নৈতিক উন্নয়ন ঘটে ঠিক তেমনি রাষ্ট্রেরও উন্নয়ন ঘটে তার কারণ আমি বলেছিলাম যে সঞ্জয়ের যে শেষ শ্লোক গীতার সেখানে রাষ্ট্রের শ্রীবৃদ্ধির কথা বলা হয়েছে সেখানে বলা হয়েছে যে যেখানে কৃষ্ণ এবং অর্জুন মিলিত ভাবে থাকবেন সেখানে কি কি হবে বলতে গিয়ে সঞ্জয় বলেছে যেখানে রাষ্ট্রের কল্যাণ হবে কাজে রাষ্ট্র কল্যাণের কথাও গীতা বলে এবং ব্যক্তিগত নৈতিক উন্নয়নের কথা তো বলেই কাজে ওয়েল বিং অব দ্য ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল অ্যান্ড ওয়েল বিং অব দ্য স্টেট এই দুটোর কথাই গীতা বলে বলে निष्काम कर्म करते गीता सहाय करते এই প্যান্ডেমিক সিচুয়েশনের কথা যখন উঠল সেখানে ওই প্রসঙ্গ উঠবে যে লোক সংগ্রহ অর্থাৎ আমি কাজ করছি আমি কর্ম করছি আমি করছি ঠিকই কিন্তু সেখানে আমার এই বোধটা নেই এইভাবে যদি লোক সংগ্রহ করা যায় 
তাহলে এবং এইভাবে লোক সংগ্রহ করা কখন যাবে যখন তোমার সেই আত্মার স্বরূপ সম্পর্কে তোমার জ্ঞান লাভ হবে তা না হলে তো সর্বদাই অহং বোধ আমার কাজের সঙ্গে লেগে থাকবে আর সর্বদাই যদি যদি আমার অহং বোধ লেগে থাকে হ্যাঁ জড়িত হয়ে থাকে তাহলে তো সেই কর্মের ফল আমাকে ভুগতে হবে এবং আমি সেই সেই কর্ম ফলের কামনার মধ্যে আমি নিজেকে জড়িয়ে ফেলব এবং এই কামনা তো তোমার তার কখনো উপশম হয় না এ কথা কৃষ্ণ বলেছেন এখন তো অনেক জায়গায় অন্য জায়গাতেও অনেকবার বলা হয়েছে কাজেই যেটা করণীয় সেটা হচ্ছে এই ওই লোক সংগ্রহ এবং লোক সংগ্রহ মানে কি লোক সংগ্রহ মানে হচ্ছে কর্ম করা কিন্তু সেই কর্মে কোন অহং বোধ থাকবে না যেমন জনকের উদাহরণ দিয়েছিলেন কৃষ্ণ যে তিনি তার কর্তব্য করছেন যেমন তিনি রাজ্য পরিচালনা করছেন কিন্তু সেখানে তার কোন অহং বোধ ছিল না তাই অহং বোধ ছিল না বলেই তিনি ওই কথা বলতে পেরেছিলেন যে সমগ্র রাজ্য পুড়ে গেলেও তার কিছু যায় আসে না অথচ সেই রাজ্যকে তিনি প্রাণাধিক ভালোবাসছেন সেই রাজ্যের জন্য যা যা কর্তব্য সবকিছু করছেন কাজে আমাদেরও শুধু এই প্যান্ডেমিক সিচুয়েশন নয় যে কোনো অবস্থাতেই যদি আমরা এই লোক সংগ্রহের যে কথা গীতার যে কথা এটা তো স্বয়ং কৃষ্ণই লোক সংগ্রহ শব্দটা বলেছেন গীতায় এই লোক সংগ্রহ যদি আমাদের আমাদের আদর্শ হয়ে থাকে তাহলে নিশ্চিতভাবে আমরা আমরা আমাদের এই পরিস্থিতিতে আমাদের যা করণীয় এবং যেভাবে করণীয় সেটা করতে পারবো সেটা যদি বর্তমান প্রসঙ্গে যদি কৃষ্ণের উপদেশের কথা বলতে হয় তাহলে এই কথাটাই বলতে হবে যদি আর কারো কোনো প্রশ্ন থেকে থাকে তাহলে করতে পারো অবশ্যই মনে হচ্ছে আর কোনো প্রশ্ন নেই খোলন্দা আমি অনেক নিয়েছি থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার টাইম ফর বোট অফ থ্যাংকস সো আই রিকোয়েস্ট ডক্টর সাহা প্লিজ থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ স্যার ফর ইউর থট প্রভিকিং লেকচার ইউর লেকচার ইন জি টাস অ্যান্ড হ্যাজ ওপেন্ড এ নিউ ভিশন টু গো ফর রিসার্চ অন শ্রীমদ ভাগবত গীতা hope all the participants also enjoyed your valuable lecture thank you again sir for your uh, virtual presence with your rich and thought provoking lecture thank you thank you okay sir thank you sir thik ache thik ache sobai bhalo theko shusto theko ha sir apni bhalo thakben thik ache pore abar kotha hobe হ্যাঁ স্যার হ্যাঁ